I just talked to police chief Brad Davis about an hour ago, and he confirms that there was an isolated shooting here at Lakefront Estates off West Brown Street in Beaverton. You can see the scene is still pretty active behind me, and he does confirm one person has died. But he wants to put a stop to some social media rumors that there was a mass shooting. Sierra, good morning. Yeah, a woman was stabbed here um, on the street of where it happened. It's uh, Mary Court, I want to say. Mary Court here at the Saginaw Bay Estates uh, Mobile Home Park. And I'm pretty much standing right in between of where the incident unfolded. I'm going to step off to my right over my left shoulder. That's your right. You'll see the gathering of, you know, investigators right here. The Michigan State Police Crime Lab is still on the scene. We have a large part, portion of the street taped off by state police tape. This is historic. It's the first time in the union's history, 88 years, that it is striking against all three automakers. So, yeah. Yeah, like you said, this is part of their new strategy where certain plants are striking, which one is right now in Detroit, but the one here in Saginaw is not. This is a targeted strike, like you mentioned. Uh, of course, the other plants affected the GM plant in Wentzville, Missouri, and the Stellantis Jeep plant in Toledo, Ohio. Kalai, it is quite the mess out here, I will say that for sure. And now that it is bright out, we can finally see kind of just the damage that is left here overnight. So we are at McKinley Road, Apple Blossom Lane. I know Chris mentioned in his uh, last uh, traffic update that this was closed. And as you can see, this is why. There are a lot of down trees right here, down power lines tangled within, not only along McKinley, but uh, here, Apple Blossom Blossom Lane. We have Spy Del Ro uh, Drive, I think it is, on the other side. We are along Saginaw Street right here in Sanford. You can see the Red Oak right behind me. They're preparing to open around 8 this morning, but uh, that is just one business that has come back. Now, Mike, the homeowner here, tells me that in his lifetime, he's experienced three separate tornadoes, but the storm that passed through here was something he never experienced before. The business owners say that the pandemic actually aided them rather than hurt them in opening a brand new business. Well, these pictures are easy to get lost in, and there's so much more than meets the eye. Going through the photos with Marsha, she tells me that this photo is the Southern Ring Nebula, a cloud of gas revealing a fading star. And she told me to take a closer look to the left side to what seems like a scratch. Well, I'll let her explain exactly what that is. The TV5 learning that Randolph has prior convictions out of Jackson County. Through a criminal record history search, TV5 learned Randolph spent about 10 years in prison. These Michigan State Police documents and confirmation from the Michigan Department of Corrections shows that Randolph went to prison December 1983 until August 1984 after being convicted of assault less than murder. Hey, good morning, everyone. We are here at Vassar High School. They are just getting their pep assembly underway just literally seconds ago. And we got the gym crowded with sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders, all the way up to our seniors and our juniors who are over here on the screen right now. We got the band playing a very special uh, piece for all of the students who are coming back here to Vassar High School and middle school, as well as the elementary school. As for what's next, Steve says that he's going to preserve this portrait and then eventually pass it down to Alyssa. So yeah, Snowfest is underway. It's just a little bit chilly out here, but nothing that we can't handle, of course, once you get the layers on. So I wanted to show you some of these ice carvings because that's a big part of Snowfest as well. I have Jeff here with me. And uh, Jeff, just tell, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the work that you've done here. We are here at Wheeler Landing Yacht Club in Bay City, and that's where the Freedom Boat Club is also stationed. And with me this morning, we have Adam Banta, membership executive, and he's just going to run us through a little bit of the process. If you don't know what Freedom Boat Club is, how it works, he's the guy that's going to make it all easy. And that's pretty much the goal of Freedom Boat Club, making boating easy. So, Adam, tell us a little bit about what to do when we get here. Say you're already signed up to be a member, what's next? So you can see the tumor right here, but after the first surgery, this was about 20% left of that tumor. 
After the second surgery, only 5% remained. So next, Marina is getting six weeks of radiation. This workplace model allows staff to spend less time in here and more time at home with their friends and family, and they say they don't think they're ever going to go back to any other type of schedule. So we're actually by the STEM Center, which is one of the uh, areas where you could go check out some activities and fun. You see it in the tent over there, wherever you see those STEM block letters. This is the kind of like the practice screen. So um, guys, we're going to take a shot, and I'm not a golfer at all. I think the most experience I have is doing mini golf. So this is still putting, so it might as well be the same thing. So we got the polka band playing in the background, so I hope you guys can hear me. I'm going to try not to scream too loud so I don't blow your eardrums out. But we have some lovely customers here with us. We have Claude, we have Joe and Julie. So thank you all for being here. What, like, I saw you guys here last year. Why do you guys keep getting up so early for this? It's worth it, and you're worth it. Money and power and they care about us for our children. Dr. Mona Hanna-Atisha reads a blurb from her best-selling book, What the Eyes Don't See. And what's kind of been an issue here in Flint. To a group of people who came to see her. We've had a ripple effect across this country. It's a story of many things. Refusing to accept uh, the status quo, refusing to accept poison water, and refusing to accept all these conditions that make it hard for our kids to be healthy and successful. And people got to ask her questions. The fact that sometimes those same agencies are supposed And understand the water crisis from her perspective. But it's also a book that's filled with history. Uh, and really kind of um, having this heightened antenna for injustice. It was at Flint Public Library this month. It was a great discussion. Dr. Hannah Atisha's notoriety began September 2015 after releasing a report. So despite switching back to Detroit Lake Huron water. Showing high levels of lead in kids. The water is not safe and people need to know that. And detailing the many effects lead has if consumed. It, it increases the likelihood of a drop in your IQ, uh, behavioral problems. Ten years later, a point of reflection. And I never thought I would be like at the center of one of our uh, most emblematic environmental and public health crises of our, of our time. And many changes. It wasn't my plan to write a story. In the name of personal health. No matter kind of what uh, the resistance I got and the backlash I got, this wasn't about me, that this work, it was about protecting my kids, my Flint kids. Giving her the courage to change the narrative. Uh, there have been so many positive, positive ripple effects, uh, really led by our advocates and the people here in Flint that have made a difference nationally. She says because what Flint went through. We now have billions of dollars invested in safer drinking. Drinking water. We have stronger regulations. Still acknowledging the crisis was preventable. The neat thing is that we've been able to make sure that future Flints don't continue to happen. But she's optimistic for kids' futures in Flint. So that is a story that I am so excited to talk about. Saying the new RX Kids program has the same spirit as the Flint water crisis. We, as a community, refuse to accept poison water, and, and we, as a community, are standing together and refusing to accept children growing up in poverty. Ten years later, this pediatrician and now author. Uh, so here is another amazing example of Flint leading the nation. Leaving signatures in her book. For the kids. Yeah. And leaving her mark on the nation and on Flint. We are grateful to Dr. Mona's dedication to our communities. In Flint, I'm Blake Keller. <laughs> WNEM TV 5.